and he got away again. I just can't believe it was Larry. Well, whether we're sure of it or not, Mr. Matthews, the time has come to take some precautions. Pick up Larry? Yes, if we can find him. Well, he's bound to return to his apartment sooner or later. I suppose you can put a stake out on it. I'm going to handle this personally, and I'd like you to come along. What happened? He got away. I think I know where he's going, to Taurus. Follow me. Right. She wasn't here. But I wonder where she went to. He's going to try and get her. Still looking for that pattern, Superintendent? No, I'm afraid I'm just trusting to luck now. Superintendent? Yes. When you find him, will you... Will you remember that something's happened to him? Something he can't control. I know, Larry. Are you asking me not to shoot to kill? Yes, I am. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stanford. I can't promise anything right now. Hey! Oh, 
Amos. He's been sighted at the shipyards. Come on. and heat treatment, there's a chance. I'm not sure, but there's bound to be some sort of change. If he comes back? He'll be here. Kenji came back, remember? At the risk of being over poetic, let me put it this way. He was conceived in the mountain. He'll return to the mountain. You shouldn't have done it, Robert. You shouldn't have started the whole thing. I suppose I'm just beginning to realize that. Still, look what I've given to science. It's all in this notebook, the whole case history, except for one detail, the formula for the enzyme. I don't want this experiment to repeat it, ever. I don't know what your plans are, but don't destroy him. Not the way you destroyed Kenji, promise me that. You did fall in love with Lady Stanford, didn't you? Tara? Some of us aren't meant to know love. Not as ordinary people do. I haven't had very good luck myself in that respect. But you've got to try with Larry. You've got to try to bring him back. I tried with Kenji. And I kept trying with Emiko, even when I knew it was hopeless. I'm afraid that was a mistake. But with this new injection and heat, lots of heat, it may work. He might separate completely, split into two human beings. But Tara... What will they be? I'm leaving you, Robert. You can't leave me, Tara. We've gone through this before. Do you want to go back to where I found you? Yes, I'll go back to that if necessary. Don't talk like a child. Haven't I treated you well? Bought you anything you wanted? What else do you want? The illusion of respectability? All right, if that's what you want, I'll marry you. That can be arranged now. You may need this, Robert.
police department. Inspector Aida, please. Can you understand me, Emiko? Emiko, try hard. Try this time. You used to be my wife. And before that, you were my sweetheart. Remember? We went to America. We went to the university together. We had wonderful plans, didn't we? We were going to be great scientists. Like Pierre and Marie Curie. But it didn't work out that way, did it, Emiko? I'm sorry. I don't know why. Maybe I offended the gods. Honey, I didn't used to believe in gods. Forgive me.
It's coming. Here it comes. It's intermission time. Time to visit our concession stand. Show starts in 10 minutes. Where's everybody going? To the refreshment center. It's everybody's favorite spot for delicious, tasty food from a snack to a full meal. Drinks, coffee, hot chocolate, and ice cold drinks of all flavors, plus all the extras, including gum, ice cream, candy. Make your evening at this drive in even more enjoyable. The refreshment stand has everything to make your visit here a pleasant one. Why not get something now? starts in nine minutes. Oh, the time is now, the time is here. Now's the time for a bite of cheer. A tasty light where the price is right. Well, look at here, you'll dig this sight. The moment's handy for a piece of candy. Just name your brand, they're all so grand. Hey, what do you think of a nice cool drink? Or a big box filled with a popcorn thrill. Let your taste buds meet with an ice cream treat. Refresh yourselves, it's time to eat. So come on, folks, let's join the band as we all head for the refreshment stand. Show starts in eight minutes. Hey, Mom. Yes, you. Why fuss and fret about dinner? Why not have it right here? Yes, this drive-in offers everyone in the family a real picnic treat for dinner. We've got delicious sandwiches with all the trimmings and your other dinner favorites, plus whatever you want to drink, hot or cold. Come early before the show starts, or eat while you're being entertained, or at intermission time. So why fuss? Give your family a tasty dinner at this drive-in. Hi. You hungry? Looking for a tempting treat? Hold on till I absorb some heat. Some added tang might please you, too. I'll slide into an oven-fresh bun. And I'm ready for your eating fun. Why don't you try a juicy, good hot dog? Mmm, delicious. Show starts in seven minutes. I'm Rodeo Joe, big star of the show. Oh, I'm strong and I'm spry, yippee-yay, yippee-yay, cause I drink T-O-D-D-Y. Yes, Toddy, the chocolate malt in a can that tastes as good or better than the kind you get at your favorite soda fountain, made with rich, real milk not powdered milk. Man, oh man, it's toddy for me. Me too. Me three. <laughs> yes, cold or hot, it hits the spot. So toddle to the bar, take it back to the car, get that chocolate malted toddy. Toddy pleases everybody. Mmm, delicious. Oh! Show starts in six minutes. How do you like your pizza? Gobbled? Nibbled? Two-fisted style. you like ours best anyway. A crisp, delicate crust topped with our own special nippy tomato sauce, seasoned just the way you like it, and lots of golden Italian cheese melted right in. Delicious, and on sale now at the refreshment center. 
Pizza, piping hot and tangy. How about some right now? Mmm, savory barbecue beef. Go ahead, fix a sandwich for yourself. Just look at that pure prime beef simmering in that special tangy barbecue sauce. Make a big one, like you do for the customers. Customers? Uh-oh. Well, somebody got it. Have to fix yourself another. Savory barbecued beef. There's still plenty for you at the refreshment center. Show starts in five minutes. For hires, that real old time root beer. Since 1876, for pleasure and thirst. You taste the difference. The flavor of actual root, bark, and herbs. Hires to you, all your taste desires. For purity and better flavor, stop and have a hires. Yes, youngsters, oldsters, all agree. Here's a drink for all the family. From the bottle, fountain, and the keg, too, it's real old-time Hires Root Beer for pleasure and thirst. Hires to you. Patronize the refreshment stand here for popcorn, sandwiches, candy, ice cream. And Hires Root Beer. Oh! Show starts in four minutes. It's refreshment time, and our refreshment stand is loaded with good things to eat. There's crispy, crunchy popcorn, and hot, delicious buttered popcorn, lots of candy, and frosty, refreshing cold drinks. Why not treat yourself at the refreshment center now? starts in three minutes. How do you make a picture of a perfect hamburger? Start with the finest grade of government inspected beef. Take it sizzling hot from the griddle and serve it up on an oven fresh bun. For the finishing touches, add mustard, ketchup, relish, or the works. Makes your mouth water, doesn't it? Yes, that picture perfect hamburger is waiting for you right now at your refreshment center. There's time to pick up enough for everyone. Wouldn't some hot buttered popcorn hit the spot right now? Extra fluffy, extra big kernels of it pop to perfection, then drenched with the golden goodness of pure sweet creamery butter. Can't you just taste it? We heap the container extra high, but <laughs> you better buy two more for the rest of the family. Piping hot golden buttered popcorn at the refreshment center right now. Show starts in two minutes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The management of this drive-in theater is happy to announce you can enjoy your favorite form of movie entertainment regardless of rain. No longer will it be necessary to let rain spoil your fun. Now you can keep your windshield clear and dry with a drizzle guard. Simply attach it to your windshield, and in a jiffy, you're enjoying the movie without constantly running your windshield wipers. A drizzle guard will save you gasoline and wear and tear on your battery. After the show is over, all you do is take off your drizzle guard, roll it up, and it's ready to be used again, just like an umbrella. So next time it rains, don't sizzle in a drizzle. Get yourself a Drizzle Guard and enjoy the show. Drizzle Guards are on sale now at the concession center. Show starts in one minute.
Attention, please. A $50 reward will be paid for information leading to the arrest and conviction of anyone caught stealing our speakers. If you accidentally pull a speaker loose, don't worry. Just turn it in. There is no charge, and we'll appreciate it. And now, on with the show. This is Coulter. Give me a time check, please. 40110, Dan. 40111, 40112, 40113. Okay, I got it. 10 4 -0. Proceed to point seven at once. Roadblock. 10 4 -0. Emergency. Code 1305. Established roadblock. Code 0.7. Stop all cars and roadblock. Verify. I read you. Car 2 at 7. You're on your own, Colter. 10-4-0. 10-4-0. Pull over to the side of the road and turn out your lights. What's wrong, Deputy? Just pull over to the side of the road. How long are we going to be held up? Pull it over. I wonder what's wrong, Gramps. Well, probably something up ahead. I hope he doesn't hold us up too long. crazy car in the middle of the road, you're going to get it banged up. You're driving too fast, aren't you, lady? Wake up, Joe. I think our luck's run out. I'm not sleeping, baby. I'm just too much of a coward to keep my eyes open when you're driving. Dig? You know, you're going to lose your license. Lady, just pull your car over there and turn out your lights. And both of you stay in it. Get the flares out of my car and light them. They're in the back of the front seat. Put one over there. And one down there. I turn on my light. Six to one, Roger. 41 a.m. Can we go now, Grant? No, not yet, honey. I don't know what's on his mind, but he told us to wait here, so there's nothing to do but wait. Bye, 
an accident? Not that I know of. Some kind of roadblock? I don't know. The deputy stopped us. Told me to put these flares out. Pull your truck behind the pickup. Hear me? Move your truck behind the pickup. Better do like the man says. Okay. Never fail. I got a date with a beautiful redhead in Sacramento, and I get held up on a road by some Mickey Mouse cop. No wonder I'm having trouble getting married. I'm out of grade here. I better put some blocks underneath the wheels. Well, give me a hand, will you? You were across the middle of the road and coming around the turn. I was only going 65 miles an hour. That's the speed limit. Lady, the law reads 65 miles an hour within the limits of safety. You are overdriving. But it's four in the morning. You are overdriving. These oh. curves are dangerous day or night. Forget it. Don't argue. Now, what'd you do with my cigarette? What's the trouble here, huh? This is a roadblock. No cars are to proceed beyond this point in either direction. So long, Pops. Until I'm instructed to remove the roadblock. Well, now, isn't that considerate? Look, baby, don't let it bug you now. It isn't going to last forever. Look, I like it here. Well, then we got it made. Oh, look, you got it made. You won the money, and I won this kooky traffic ticket. You know, this one's going to cost me my license. Look, baby, how often do you get a chance to make a killing like this? $175,000. I don't let this badge happy cat bug you. I'll buy your ticket back. Look, I'll even buy his badge. I, uh, I put those flares where you said. All units. Confirming 1305. It's a button up. It's a button up. Confirming 1305. Coulter at point seven. I read you. A 1305. Repeat. A 1305. 10 <laughs> I think someone's coming now, Sam. Can you make out who it is? It's a police officer. Guess there's been some kind of accident. Officer, is there an accident? Is that what the flares are for? Pull your car behind that convertible, please. Yes, sir. Any idea how long we'll be delayed? Nope. Just pull your car over there. I hope it's not too long. Pull your car over there. Turn out your light and come up and join the group. Sure. All right, group around here. I want to talk to you. I'm Dan Coulter, deputy sheriff in Del Oro County. I know it seems strange if he stopped here at 4 o'clock in the morning, but the explanation's coming. First, let's have your name. <clears throat> my name's Sam Barnes. Uh, this is my wife, Karen. We're from Tahoe City. This is Timmy. Hiya, Timmy. Meet Cheryl Hudson from San Francisco. Joe Baraji, North Beach. Crazy. The name's Al Weston. Look, I got an important date tonight. How about you, Dad? Jacob Elliott Saunders. Lived around here all my life. Everybody just calls me Jake. I wish he'd tell us what this is all about. I'm anxious to leave. If we missed that plane after all the trouble we had getting reservations. All right, folks, there's one thing more. It may become necessary for me to... Just a minute, Jake. Well, I'm going over to the truck to get my granddaughter. I don't think she ought to be over there alone. All right, is there anybody else in these cars? I got a kid in the cab of my truck, some hitchhiker I picked up in Reno. 
Why didn't he get out of the truck? Beats me. We aren't going to be able to leave here for a while, honey. Gramps, there's something wrong, isn't there? Well, he hasn't told us yet. He hasn't told you anything? Well, everything's going to be all right. Has he told you anything? Now, June, honey, everything's going to be all right. I promise you. Gramps, are you ever going to stop treating me like a child? Oh, I don't mean nothing. Sometimes I think of you that way. I raised you, raised your mother. Maybe I don't want you to grow up. Oh, Gramps, I do love you. Hey, you're in the cab. Come on down out of there. The lady! <laughs> Junie, you all right? For a minute, I oh, no, thought no, he was... No, no, I'm all right, Gramps. I'm all right. He's a maniac. See the way he attacked me? You're lucky he didn't use that knife on you. So that's what the roadblock was for, stakeout. Why didn't he tell us? Well, maybe he thought you were the one he was looking for. No. He knew the boy by name. You okay? Yes, he never came near me, but you sure had a close call. You never can tell what you're going to run into at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm worried about Timmy. Timmy? Yes. Oh, you mean your dog. Yes, he went right in after that fella. A regular bloodhound. Oh, here he comes now. Well, I guess that's that. Come on, Karen, we can go. Yeah, I guess you can. Coming, Sam. Have a nice trip. Thank you, and you be careful who you pick up next time. Where are you going? Well, I'm just going to go out Come on the... back here. What for? I'm hip. The roadblock was set up for the kid, and you goofed it. So now you're running around playing Wyatt Earp. That's cool, man. But we don't have to play, too. Who was that guy? Clint Delaney. Nice kid. Six months ago, he killed a young girl. I remember reading about that. He stabbed that Ramsey girl to death. For sure, he's responsible for a couple other killings, too. He's so frightened. His old man's dying of cancer in a county hospital. Show you how sick he is. Know what he did? He writes his old man a letter and tells him not to die till he gets there. Says he wants to watch him suffer. Wow, that guy was riding next to me with that knife for the last two hours. All units, all units. Situation 1310. Situation 1310. This is not a test. Condition yellow. Air raid. Air raid. Extreme emergency. All officers take charge. Operation eager. 1310. Yellow alert. This is not a test. All right, we're in a state of emergency. This is a yellow alert, an air raid warning. We're being attacked. We can't be. I tell you, we're being attacked. How do you know the men didn't say anything about being attacked? Don't you understand what a yellow alert is? Well, what is it? It means we're in a state of emergency. But still don't I tell you, we're that. under attack. We've got to get to the nearest shelter. There must be one in the city. Come on, Joe, let's get out of here. Nobody's going anywhere. That's why I stopped you. Look, man, can't you get on that thing and ask him what's going on? They'll tell us as soon as they know. What about Conrad? Maybe they know what's going on. What's the matter? Can't you find Wait it? Wait a minute. What are you doing? Oh, it's right over here near 640. Crazy. It's fucked up. No, it isn't. It's working, baby. I just can't get Conrad with all this grabbing interference. You're wasting your time. There's no regular radio reception in these mountains. There's too many minerals here. Well, how are we going to know what's happening? They're liable to be attacking any minute. Get out of those cars! I said get out of those cars! And bring your keys! Now!
Your radios are no good on this ridge. Only contact is the receiver in my car. All units. All units. Situation 1310. Condition red. Evacuation. Evacuation operation scatter. This is not a test. 1310. Situation red. All highways out of population centers to be cleared for evacuation operation scatter. All officers have full authority to deal with local problems. Did you hear that? They're evacuating the city. That's right. That's why I stopped you. And you're going to stay here. Every road from every population center is going to be jammed with thousands of automobiles, cars, trucks, buses. Every road jammed. Wow, baby. Do you realize if we'd have kept going, we'd have ran smack into that grabbing mess? And to stop you from adding to the congestion, my orders are to keep you here. I can just see what's going on down there. God help the Sunday drivers. Imagine the panic, all of them trying to run. What if someone stalls? As soon as somebody stalls, about 15 cats are going to get out of their cars and they're just going to push them right off the road, man. But in the meantime, the roads will be backed up for miles. This means we're not going to get to Mexico City. This is on a level. won't be very long before there'll be things flying around a little bit more important than a plane to Mexico City. I just can't believe it. Well, you better believe it. How about that? I could have been driving along the highway and bam, the end of the world. Well, at least I've got some company here. The end of the world? Could be. It doesn't seem possible. That's because people have been talking about it for so long. What are we going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to take it easy and proceed according to plans. Plans? You got it all worked out, Pop? It's all worked out. You got it worked out for a situation like this? Eight people on a mountain road? That's right. What do you got in the back of your heap, man? A collapsible bomb shelter? Attention all control points. All military, all civil defense units. Operation scatter must not slow down. Traffic stoppages on River Freeway must be cleared. Execute severest measures to control hysteria and keep traffic flowing. Martial law. Emphasize martial law. Sam, I want to go home. I don't want to stay yes, here. Yes, let's get in the car. You just heard the radio. Every road is jammed. Where are you going to go? I don't know, but I'm going to go someplace. Brady, man. You know, I'll bet the cats are still rolling dice up the state line. How can you talk like that? We're being attacked. The whole country could be destroyed in the next few hours, and all you can do is talk about dice. This thing is on the level. What do you want me to do? Go out and fight the war myself? Is all that right, that's enough! I'm warning all of you. If I have to use force to keep order here, I will. You're not helping matters any by arguing. Isn't the Dalton grade up ahead? That's right, it's just up the road. We're 35 miles from the city. And 25 miles that way is Western Air Defense Command Headquarters. And 15 that way is Ramco. Ramco? A missile fuel refinery. But we're in a prime target area. One bomb would... You know what I think? I think you and you and you and me are sitting ducks on ground zero. Do you mean we're sitting on a target? Right smack in the full zone. Well, let's get out of here. What are you keeping us for if this is ground zero? Where are you going to go? We're well, safer here than we would be in a city. Lucky I stopped you. Any idea what it's like back there? People get pretty panicky. I bet they're scratching and fighting their way out. There's a plan to control it. For a man, you talk pretty loud. Joe, where'd I put that fab? Wait a minute. We no drinking here. I can't find it, Joe. Get out of that car. Here it is. Oh, okay. Just stay in the car a minute, baby. Now, if I remember correctly, there's a bar right back down the road. You're not going any place. What's the matter? Can't you hear? I said you're not going anywhere. Look, man, if the world's coming to an end and me and my chick one ended standing in front of a bar, that's none of your business. I told you before, and I mean it. I'll use force to keep order. You ought to take it easy. Who knows how much time we have left? Seems a shame to waste it getting mad at each other. Wait a minute. Did you have to hit him? Look, maybe it's my fault for mentioning Ground Zero. I was just talking because I ain't no general. That's pretty logical thinking. We all know that first action will be to knock out the country's ability to resist. 
First thing will be a white light that'll blind us. Then a hot flame that'll burn out. Take it easy. But that's not all. Even the air you breathe will be deadly. Everything you touch will give off radiation. Ever hear of Hiroshima? And you won't hear it. It'll happen suddenly. There'll be no warning. There'll be some chance, Gramps. Some of us will make it. We'll make it. Oh, man, that's a laugh. We'll make it just because you say so, huh? What are you going to do, Pops? Dig eight foxholes over in the side of that mountain? Do you realize the radius, the area of destruction from the explosion of one hydrogen bomb? It's too late to run. People survived Hiroshima. We can survive this. We can't do it with you yelling your head off. What do you want us to do? Now you're thinking. What do you want us to do, Coulter? Empty that truck. What? You heard me. All of you. Empty that truck. We get inside, it might protect us. Gramps, I don't want to be locked up inside of that truck. Do you realize how long we'll have to stay inside? It's going to be about two weeks. That's right. The radiation will be deadly. Do you really think we could stand a blast in the truck? You got a better idea? Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. There's no place to go. Now let's get over there and get that truck unloaded. You better go with him, honey. Well, what about you? I'm just going to stay here and watch you cats work. Go know? ahead, or he's going to have us both handcuffed. No, no, go ahead, honey. What's the matter? Well, what am I going to do with the stuff inside? It's worth a lot of money. So what? I want to go in that truck, Gramps. Junie, I'll be there with you. You won't be alone. Do we have to go in that truck? We have to do what the man says. I can't stand the thought of being all locked up. Junie, we got to learn to accept things as they come. Right now, our only chance of surviving is to do what the man says. I won't be able to stand it, Gramps. Junie! I'm not going to go in there. <laughs> I need my suitcase. I can't leave without my suitcase. Scared? Maybe. A little. Well, don't try to run away. I want to talk to you. Your face is all scratched. Does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. Where's my suitcase? Do you know what's happening? We're being attacked. It's a yellow alert. We're going to be bombed. You had my suitcase. Why didn't you bring it? Don't you understand? We're all going to die. No, they will. But you won't. You were nice to me. Junie! Is your name June? Clint? That's right, Clint. June, are you up there? Don't let him come up here. He's not after you. None of them were ever nice to me. You were nice to me. June, come on down. What do you want me to do? June! Judy! Let me talk to him. Don't let him come up. 
come up here. I'm coming down, Gramps. Next time, bring my suitcase. Emergency. Let's just go to her over there and give us a hand. An emergency what? We're in a yellow alert. Subject to attack at any minute. What do you mean? Never mind the talk. Give me your keys. Now get over there and help unload that truck. We're going to use it as a bomb shelter. Say, Junior just ran into that Clint. Where'd he go? He ran away. I don't want any of you people wandering off. Get this truck unloaded. Who's attacking us? I don't know, but the warning's been coming over his radio. That means nuclear warfare. Are they sure it's coming here? Yes, they're sure. They're evacuating the city. Oh, God. Automobiles can't move us fast enough to get us out of the area of destruction. There's no place to run. No place. That truck is supposed to protect us from the blast? Well, he thinks so. Cooperate like this. Either you cooperate and we work together, or you're going to sit where you are. Joe, don't fight with him. Honey, I don't want to be alone. Do what he says. Well, how's it going to be? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. How are you doing, honey? They're unloading the truck. Just full of goodies. Hey, you know, there's a cookie mink coat over there like the one I always wanted. Oh, yeah? Hey! Don't unload that stuff near the wheels. We're gonna have to move the truck. Put them over there. There it is. See, Joe? Wasn't I right? I want to be careful. Look what you did. Who's going to take inventory? Well, you've got a lot of valuable merchandise in this truck. Sam, please don't just stand there. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you, and don't glare at me. That's enough. No, it isn't. Shut up! Why don't you pitch in? You'd be surprised how much better you felt if you were busy. This is a real pirate's den. There's all kinds of loot. There are a couple of more coats in here. Latch on to one. You too, Pollyanna. Hey, man, you got something to open this with? It's Christmas at Macy's. Hey, man, you got something to open this with? Use your hand. I bought a meat coat for you. Are you sure to fit? Like a glove.
little incongruous, isn't it? A symbol of the joyous celebration of the savior of man. I was looking forward to such a happy Christmas this year. Do you know that one of these big missiles launched from any place on Earth can strike a target with pinpoint accuracy in just 75 minutes? We got the first warning 20 minutes ago. God rest ye merry, gentlemen. Money means nothing when you're really interested. But we've only met Mr. Weston. Call me Al. All right, Al. What do you want? Uh, a diamond tiara. OK, here's a diamond tiara for you, princess. What else do you want? How about some caviar? Sure, there's a case around here somewhere. Caviar. Here we go. Imported, the real thing. That's only the beginning, Karen. Nylons for every hour of the day. Al, oh, they're size 14. What's the difference? Well, what'll I do with all these things? Put them out on the patio by the swimming pool. <laughs> anything you want, it's yours from Al. And no strings attached. I'll give you anything but a tomorrow. There isn't going to be a tomorrow, is there? I don't know. I, I kind of like to think there is. It's, it's too bad we can't cram everything we'd like to do into this truck. Yeah. We got food and we got water and... Yes. That is a compliment. Well, I mean it. This truck ought to be pretty interesting for the next 14 days. Yes. You too hungry? There's some food over here. Uh, Pete, how about giving me a hand? Hundred-proof bourbon. Not bad. Seems you ought to have a drink. Joe! Joe, you're a regular St. Bernard. Well, don't just stand there. Rescue little old Cheryl. Well, I'm coming, baby. Well, alcohol kills all germs. So just like that, you have 100 proof sake, ma'am. Rock the rock. I'm scared, Joe. I'm scared. How about that, Jazz? 175,000 bucks. Isn't that frost you? For the first time, we got independence. No more scamming and hustling. 